So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to set up for a traumatic chest strain. We're gonna chat a little bit about what kit you need and then what you're gonna be expected to do as the nurse that's assisting. And then at the end, just a few hints and tips. So the first thing that most people will gravitate towards is the chest strain bottle itself. Ideally, the most important thing that we're gonna to want to do when that trauma patient comes in is make the thoracostomies, make the holes in the side of the chest. And we can't do that just with the bottle alone. We need all of the other kit. So that's something that we can have, but set aside, and we can always prep it a little bit later in the procedure if we need to. You're gonna need some water to fill your chest strain. You're gonna need some iodine to clean and prep your patient. You're also gonna need a tub for your iodine to go in. After that, your doctor or physician is gonna need a sterile gown to put on, and they're also gonna need some sterile gloves. Check which size they prefer, it will make it faster for you. You're gonna need a drape to cover your patient with. The drain itself, um, so we are gonna use a size 32 or a 28 French. You want your actual chest strain set. So this will be provided by your CSSD in your trust um, and it'll come with all the implements that you need to actually make the hole and, and insert the drain. A little bit of gauze, try and keep that out of the way. It's just for cleaning your patient. You are also going to want a 10 ml syringe, some lignocaine, a drawing up needle and a giving needle. It's a painful procedure. Make sure your patient is properly analgesed before you start. The other bits that you're gonna want is a scalpel. A size 11 scalpel is, is ideal. So a 23, something like that, probably gonna be too small. Same as with your sutures, you want ideally a large suture. If you imagine what it's holding in, it's holding a big drain into somebody's body. So a size one zero or a two zero non-absorbable suture is what you're looking for. Other key thing with your suture is ideally you want a need a suture with a needle that's a straight edge. So um, a straight line, not a curved line. The last couple of bits that you'll need is two clear um, adhesive dressings. Whatever your trust stocks, whatever you prefer to use, but ideally clear adhesive dressings to go over your sutures and just anchor your chest drain in place more securely and it's also covering where we've made that wound. The last thing that you'll want is just your own PPE for when you're assisting, so a pair of gloves and a pinny to pop on. So now that we know what all the kit is and everything that we're going to want, what we're going to do is set up on our trolley which is the last thing that you'll need. Um, ideally a dressing trolley, um, but whatever flat surface that you can appropriately clean would be okay. So our trolley's clean and we're gonna start setting. Obviously anything that is sterile, I'm trying not to touch using my ANTT technique. If anything is already in a sterile packet, you can use that as your base. With your sharps, try and put them into an area of your trolley where you can then tell whoever the physician is that's putting the drain in where they are. We don't want anybody to needle stick themselves because there's a sharp that they're not aware of. So that's everything that we need uh, set up other than the chest drain bottle, which we'll do in a second. Word of advice with your lignocaine, your doctor is going to want to um, check what it is and the expiry date, which you should be saying to each other because it is a drug. And second thing, when you are holding it for them to um, dry out, hold it upside down, you stay still. They're the one that's got the needle that's coming into the end, so just hold still and they'll work around you. Um, it's also useful if you just find the scissors in the uh, tray and just set your scissors to a side. Obviously they're sterile, so we're gonna keep them on our sterile field. Chest strains come in a variety of different uh, styles, so just know what you've got in your hospital. So once you've got all your bits out, you wanna fill your, dr your drain. Like we said about them being different varieties, they'll all require filling to different levels. So this type has a 45 mil fill. The easiest way to do it is open your bottle up and then if you take your plunger out and rest your syringe in and then 
very carefully just fill it to that 45 line and then you can just let it drain through and most chest strains will have a fill line on them so it's the the blue liquid should fill to about here once that's in pop your chest strain under your trolley so what to expect when you are assisting? Um, we set our scissors aside. The reason that we set the scissors aside is because once this drain is into the um, into the pleural cavity, it, until it's sutured, it's not anchored in place. So what the doc's probably going to ask you to do is just lightly hold the end of it with your gloves on um, to hold it in place while they start suturing. When they're suturing, it's difficult for them to cut at the same time. So they'll probably ask you to hold the scissors and then when they say cut, you're just going to snip the suture for them. And when they say cut again, you're going to snip the next suture for them. The other thing that you're going to have to cut is that this end of the drain and this end of the drain bottle, they don't fit together. So you remove your key part, but they, they don't fit into each other. So what we have to do is cut this end of the chest drain off and it will slot in. So once your drain's all in, things that you need to remember to check is that it is bubbling. By bubbling what we mean is that fluid that we put in, you can see bubbles rising in it and that it's swinging and that means that the drain itself is swinging backwards and forwards. The two actions that make that happen is when the patient's breathing. The swinging happens with the breathing and the bubbling happens when we're relieving the pneumothorax that may have been in there. Things that might come in useful when you're caring for a patient that's got a chest strain in. For instance, um, if you're going to have to take them to x-ray to have their post um, insertion x-rays, or if you're going to go to CT, things like that where, where sometimes we can have some problems. If the end of the drain comes off, so the chest strain is still in the patient body, but the drain attaching it to the bottle has dropped off and is on the floor. Don't panic. A way to get yourself back to the emergency department is if you can find a sterile bottle of water, most departments will have them, even CT in places like that, and just dip the end of the drain into the bottle. Once it's under the water line, it'll create the same underwater seal that the chest drain bottle does. It's a little bit faffy while you're walking up the corridor, but you'll be able to get yourself back into your department and then put a new clean chest drain on. If the drain itself comes completely dislodged, so the sutures undo for some reason, or it slips all the way out and onto the floor, and you just have a patient that's got a thorough costomy hole. A quick way to fix that, if you haven't got a chest seal, so you haven't got a muscle seal, you haven't got an aspirin seal, take a piece of gauze, put it onto the chest, and then tape down three sides with micropore and leave one side open. As long as one side is free of tape, it'll act the same as what a chest seal will. And again, you would be able to get yourself back to your safe area, back into resource or back into your department to be able to get the attention of a doctor and a drain reinserted. If your patient, after having a drain inserted, starts to complain of pelvic pain, sometimes that can be because the drain itself has gone so far in that it's pushing on the diaphragm. It might be that after the, the post-CT or the post-X-ray, it just needs pulling back slightly. The same as if they're complaining of pain at the top half of their body, it might be that it's pushing on some anatomy further up the chest and causing referred pain. Again, it's just let the doctor know and potentially the drain needs pulling back. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you found it useful. Don't forget to go back into your own ED departments and compare the kit that you've seen on this video with what you've got so you're familiar with your own kit.